Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi, and welcome back at the museum. Today's story is about Tim McCurver, one of the genius developers of the DCC Portable. We met Tim during the premiere last year in Eindhoven of the documentary. Tim had signed up as a Kickstarter and obtained two tickets to the premiere. With a lot of visitors that actually were attending, we knew them by name, but we had never met them in person and we never knew their real backstory. Were they DCC fans? Did they work for Philips? And if they did so, what was their exact role? So when we heard that Tima was a developer of the Portable, we asked him if we could meet him at his home to get his story on camera. This is the Tima Kuiper story. So I'm, uh, I'm Tima Kuiper and I joined the, the DCC team in about 1991. Uh, before that, I, I worked with Philips from uh, 85 uh, on uh, optical recording stuff on uh, the, 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 the laser discs and also on uh, cameras. And via cameras, we made a uh, digital video recorder where we did magnetical recording. So I entered uh, the magnetic recording via the, the camera stuff. Uh, and there I joined the, 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 the headphone stereo group that was an, uh, a part, uh, a separate part from the main uh, recording uh, unit uh, of a development team, uh, which was already, I think, three years in, uh, in, in place to make the, the bigger recordings, uh, the recorders, uh, the, the, the DCC 900 and, uh, and stuff. Uh, we did. We were a par parallel team where we started uh, to, to work on, the, on, on portable devices. Um, there we developed uh, the, the DCC 130, uh, which was a uh, playback only unit with uh, second generation head and uh, yeah, a chipset which was not fully optimized for portable, so it uh, used a little bit too much current, and, but it was the first portable player. And um, uh, in the years after, we developed the, the DCC-170 uh, and uh, part of the team worked also on the DCC-175, the, the digital one. And, and in that area, I, I uh, worked mainly on the, on, on the head and, and the, 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 the read amplifier, amplifier and the write amplifier. So the, 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 the inner core of the DCC, the analog uh, signal uh, processing, which is visible on the, on the, on this PCB. This, this is the, 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 the read amplifiers, this is the write amplifiers. Um, and um, the team uh, which, uh, who developed the heads was uh, also here in Eindhoven, on the, Eindhoven in, the, in the Beemstraat. And that's the, uh, the area which uh, uh, developed before uh, uh, that on uh, on uh, yeah, audio um, uh, yeah I don't know exa exactly they uh, de de uh, de de developed de de there was already an 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 head development group here in Eindhoven and after the disaster with uh, with uh, with uh, Seagate which I never was a part of it but I. I know the story. Uh, they moved over to uh, internal Philips, uh, making the the, 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 the the DCC heads here, uh, which was quite a challenge because uh, the, the 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 bandwidth of the heads, uh, the, the the frequency response was very critical and it must be improved quite a lot. Uh, but also the stability, uh, we. Coped, uh, had a lot of troubles with the stability of the heads, that uh, magnetic particles are uh, inside the head and uh, magnetics is something weird. There are uh, tiny magnetic particle, particles inside the head which do some different things. Uh, so there is always a kind of distortion in, into the magnetic uh, response of the, of the head. And that that uh, that distortion must be in in uh, in uh, at at a low uh, low level, and 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 this uh, uh, linearity, this distor distortion, uh, that what what was the main the, the red line in the whole development of the of the of the, of the uh, development of the heads. Uh, so I 
worked quite closely uh, with that group to to prove uh, to make measurement systems to uh, to uh, to see how how stable these these heads are. But I yeah, and and and, and in parallel we developed uh, this this read and, and write amplifier. Uh, together with an IC group, which was also here in Eindhoven. At that time, Philips was still quite big with a lot of development uh, develop, uh, development areas. There was also an IC development lab. Uh, together with guys there, uh, we made this uh, third generation of uh, read and write amplifiers, which are here, here in, and here, these are specially uh, optimized for, for low power. And, 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 and with that, we achieved uh, the the the, the DC, DCC 170, which was much more optimized for uh, for portable, but also has recording heads. Re uh, yeah, the, the the head has a recording area and 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 and, and there were low low power right amplifiers. So it was all possible with uh, a single um, a rather small uh, uh, nickel cadmium uh, cell. So. Yeah, that was my main period in, uh, for, yeah, what is it, from 91 to 95 till it finished, that it was clear that uh, we will not uh, survive. Um, the, uh, the first portable that, that, that we've gotten from Gijs was a portable called the 180, and yeah. uh, that had a glass door, but from the design you can immediately see that that could never be come to fruition because of the power problems. Yeah. That's uh, too I, much th I think that I, I even don't know this this, this unit. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, that was uh, I think it's, it was developed as an uh, as, as as a kind of proof con of concept, and I think it's it has never been an, a product. Uh, the DC one hundred and thirty was was the product. But even the one hundred and thirty had. A, a much larger battery than, than yeah. in, in the, the, the 170. Because there the, still the, 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 the read amplifier was uh, not fully optimized uh, for, for low power. We changed the, the, the whole uh, 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 the, the magnetic recording. Uh, 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 there are MREs, uh, magnetic resistive elements. Uh, that are the, the elements in, in the head uh, who um, uh, who uh, make uh, yeah, transform the magnetics to electronics, and they need an, an, a bias current, and this bias current, uh, yeah, that should be as low as possible. And in, in in these kind of units, the bias currents, yeah, there's current current enough, so there, this was rather high. And uh, with uh, the, the goal of of this the, the, to make this portable is to reduce these bias currents. And uh, yeah, and, and and so uh, that was part of the the, the read amplifiers, which uh, the, the output was is linear depending on uh, on on the on the on this bias current. So if you reduce the bias current, your your output is also reducing. So you need uh, lower noise amplifiers. Uh, so we, we did a lot of reducing those uh, the, 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 those noise behavior of the, of the read amplifiers just to have an, 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 uh, still an acceptable uh, performance. So the, um, the fact that every serial number starts with MZ, which stands for Marant, what was Marant's involvement? Was it mostly design or...? So uh, yeah, we, we developed the, the inner core, so the, 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 the read amplifiers, but also the PASC uh, post-processing, uh, the, the, so the, the whole chipset. And we worked together with Marans uh, to make this the full application. So everything uh, outside this application was done by Marans. There was an, uh, an, an development team in uh, in in in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Yokohama, I guess. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was. Um, and, and and there I uh, it, at that at that time email was not uh, in 1995. I I know that I I wrote my my first email, but everything uh, goes by fax. I had such a heap of fax information going going over and, uh, and, and to this, those guys in uh, in, in Marans. And there we developed, uh, yeah, we helped them develop the, this unit. The, the, the tape me mechanism was from uh, from Machusta, uh, and uh, but the whole application and the whole unit was done by the the, the, the uh, Marans technicians. So it was, yeah, 
uh, cooperation between our lab and uh, and the Marans guys. Okay, so there were yep. um, three units. You had the one thirty four, which was a playback only. Yeah. You remember it, or you have not worked on that one? No, the only one thirty four. I've not not worked. Okay. Yeah. It's the same as the one seventy. It's just uh, uh, just like the one thirty, only a playback unit. Yeah. Looks and acts the same, uh, except for the recording part. And then what about the one seventy five? Yeah, the 175 was uh, a kind of special project within our lab um, where a few people uh, thought uh, that uh, at that time uh, digital recording was not uh, that common. Eh? Uh, so, and, and especially real-time recording on, on, an, on a Windows platform was quite a challenge. But some people uh, set set this uh, this up in in our uh, in, it, 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 basically the, the, the uh, DCC recording is is a digital recorder eh? so uh, there is uh, anywhere in in the chip there is digital data so um, those guys they made an, uh, an 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 FPGA I don't know exactly how the, how they did it I was not uh, closely involved in that but uh, and and. Uh, they separated this this data to make it uh, connect uh, to connect on a parallel port of of a PC, and they worked with an, an external software company to make it uh, real time Windows software to make recordings, and so it was not meant as a, as a big uh, big project with within, but it it happened on our lab to uh, to make and uh, make it a digital recorder, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it could also be used as a 500 megabyte tape streamer, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, I don't, yeah, the uh, audio files are this is in fact uh, data, so you can whatever you it's in in a Windows area, so you can store either WAV files or you can store any any other file. Yeah, so but yeah. The, yeah, what I said, it, it, it was never meant to be really big. So that's the reason why there are only a few of those. Uh, yeah, I believe only, on only 1200 cables were ever made from yeah. the parallel connection to the uh, the special connection into the, uh, the the 175. But other than that, other than the first board, everything else is the same. Yeah. Then between the 170 and the 175. Yeah, so it, 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 it's much much reuse of the of the of the 170 because that was the existing. Uh, mm -hmm. But those guys said we were we work uh, yeah they they work quite close together with uh, with us and uh, we were on the on the on the on the player side and they on the okay. the digital recorder part. Yeah. So um, when uh, when did you find out about that there was a renewal of interest in in, in DCC? <laughs> I heard, uh, yeah, since something like a half a year ago, then when the the, the crowdfunding was was started, as uh, one of my uh, former co colleagues uh, 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 told me, and uh, yeah, I was looking around and I was surprised that there was so much interest in it because, to be honest, I totally forgot about everything. It was on my uh, uh, anywhere in a, in a dark area in my house. Uh, I Placed all those, st those stuff, and uh, I really had to look uh, to, to find it back. But yeah, um, yeah, I was surprised to see it. it was, uh, and uh, so I, I joined the, the crowdfunding, and I joined uh, the, the, the the meeting here, and uh, and the, the, the presentation of the, of the movie here in uh, in the Nat Lab. Yeah, and I enjoyed it uh, quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, you and your wife came to the uh, to the to the to the premiere. Yeah. Um, what um, What did you think? Uh, what did you think of the premiere uh, of the of the documentary itself? I, I think you you said okay, there was you know maybe something uh, missing that you would have done differently. No. Yeah. <laughs> No, if no, you don't have to answer it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, for for me. There were also surprising parts in it. Eh? So, um, uh, uh, did you know yeah. about the patents about the, the, no. the money generated? No, no, no. But I I knew that, and that still, that Philips 
uh, also on CDs, uh, the, 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 the lot of money is generated on, uh, on, on, on IPs and, uh, and, 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 and patents. There is a, still a patents office of, of, of uh, Philips here in Eindhoven, earning still a lot of money on, on patents. And, and we as, as engineers are also, also forced to make to generate pat uh, patents and and, and uh, yeah forced uh, asked uh, and and, and, and uh, every patent is, is is generating money money for them yeah but I didn't know that uh, it, uh, that the DCC was uh, also generating that 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 kind of money and and to be honest uh, I I knew that the PASC uh, protocol was indeed uh, the basis of one of the the, the first real uh, compression mechanisms in, in 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 audio, and I knew that uh, the, the mechanisms are used in in, in MP3. So that uh, and and uh, this this PASC uh, uh, protocols, uh, yeah, I was always uh, 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 I really uh, appreciated what what they did did there. There, there was uh, te from technology scene. It was it, it was very in, uh, uh, new and and, and, and yeah uh, and highly highly sophisticated at that time to do that in silicon. Did any of these players make it into your home stereo? That you oh, yeah, it's, it was for uh, about ten years in my in my room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, but yeah, this is. The, the tapes uh, I didn't uh, play them that often and 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 very often these tapes uh, there are many tapes of uh, where are are from uh, development series and probably not that highly uh, high in quality and then there are so there, there are many of those uh, and, uh, not really uh, from a good quality so uh, that's that's uh, and so yeah, at, at a certain moment you go di digital, you, uh, I have uh, an, uh, 800 CDs and I have a, lo a lot of uh, di digital uh, uh, recordings at the moment. Yeah, so you, you go with the stream. Uh, so I didn't play the, the DCC anymore, so that it moved. Uh, Do you have a, a, a maybe something you would like to add, an anecdote or something that... that, uh, that you would think would be worth mentioning in, in, in front of the camera a story about the development or later in, in life regarding DCC? Uh, yeah, I was always surprised um, that our lab was about 30 people. Uh, and, and, and you see how many people around there. Yeah? We, we, we developed the, the, the inner core, but there are in total, within Philips, so many people involved in it. Yeah, there was a group in uh, in Wetzlar who made a car radio, and I uh, I joined, I uh, collaborated collaborated with with the, the, these guys as well. Uh, there was a group in uh, on on the NAT lab doing pre research. There was a, a, a group doing the the, the, the tape. Uh, I, I think in total there were about five hundred people working on DCC at the time, and that, that really surprised me. Once there was an, an, a meeting here in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the, uh, the everyone here in, in, in Eindhoven, and, and uh, at that time, uh, that was the first time we saw how big DCC really was within, uh, within Philips. So many people working on it. Yeah. Can you also, um, as a close, tell the story about where I was talking to you about 40 tracks? And you corrected me about yeah. about how the th why there are only thirty six tracks and not forty. Yeah, uh, this this head is uh, is is really complex. Eh? There are uh, what you say the uh, two times eighteen tracks uh, because this head is not rotating. Eh? You, you uh, it's a fixed head, and you have to uh, read both areas of the tape. So there already you have nine read heads and nine. Uh, read heads for the for the B side, but you have to, to record as well. So you have write heads and read heads. So there is no space for it to to do also uh, analog uh, uh, reading tracks and uh, no, re reading tracks because uh, this you cannot write uh, analog. Um, but we found out that you can do analog reading with uh, with uh, the, 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 the digital heads as well if you. Combine 
uh, if you see the, 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 the analog tracks are uh, uh, left and right, the, the disc side and the, the digital tracks are eight tracks divided over, over this, this area. So you can use two of those heads in the analog area and two of those heads in that area and you combine the, the signals and you make very good low noise amplifiers and you do some uh, uh, HF bias over this, this, this heads uh, so that uh, all uh, noise which is not or distortion which is not important for digital signals but for analog signals you, you need a, a very uh, big uh, uh, signal to noise ratio so that uh, we added uh, some some uh, uh, some higher frequency in to uh, yeah to make this this sig signal analog compatible and uh, this is combined in in this read and amplifier so we used the di digital heads to read the analog tracks and uh, finally we did such a good job in that that it was nearly not audible that you use only two small heads instead of one big head to read analog, t uh, analog tracks. So the, the noise figures were uh, just as comparable as, an, uh, as, an, as a normal uh, aud uh, audio uh, playback. Wouldn't it have been logic in hindsight to, to use the, that part of the technology in a, in a stationary player instead of making a complex ro rotating head? Uh, I think if we would have continued with uh, the, the project i'm i'm pretty sure that uh, that that would have been done okay well thank you thank you very much for for for, for your interview uh, yeah and um uh, thanks for sharing your story okay You're welcome okay thank you <laughs> yeah. at the end of this interview team donated his portable dcc 170 players to the dcc museum one of them was used during development after the interview, he shared a short story via email later regarding the TDA 1380. He mentioned that the DCC 170 has a non-rotary head, which means that all 18 tracks, 9 on side A and 9 on side B of the DCC tape must be read in one head position. So at that position, there is no space for an analog track, since in a rotary head, the analog tracks are positioned on the B side of the head. An MRE hat is made in a water fab, comparable with IC technology. In case of the MRE hat, it was not so easy to make layers in the third dimension, so analog tracks were not possible. But MRE hat needs some internal magnetic biasing, which means that there must be an additional magnetic field to make the MRE work in its best operation point. This DC bias is also applied in the rotary heads. There, at the DCC 9 head side, it is just a static DC current. I have in mind that it's something like 10 milliamps. Then the MRE elements give their optimum output. For digital mode, the distortion factor of these heads were not so important, but for analog ACC mode, this distortion is very important. Distortion levels of minus 60 dB are easily audible, so they were placed in the hats in a feedback loop, where this DC bias is used to generate a feedback channel. Doing this, the MRE hat is kept in a fully compensated magnetic field which results in the best distortion levels. The feedback mechanism itself also improves the distortion levels. The analog audio signal can be taken from the output of the feedback amplifier, since there the compensation is fed into the head. The same principle is used for the DCC-170 hat, which we call Betty by the way. There the analog signals are read from the DCC hats X plus 0 and 4 plus 5, so the feedback loops need to be applied split it over 9 hats, one for the left and one for the right channel. The DC bias coils were split it in two therefore. Each section has its own feedback amplifier which provides DC bias in DCC mode and DC bias plus analog feedback in ACC mode. So it looks there are analog tracks in the Betty head, but these are the DS bias windings in that. It can be clearly seen in the data sheet of the TDA 1380.
Now we hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.